you seen an eclipse in real life? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I've seen many. I have. I've seen several. Yeah, I've seen quite a few. Yeah, I've seen an eclipse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm happy to see another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was even before when I was born. Mic check, mic check. Fasten your seatbelt, we're ready for launch. T minus in three, two, one, throttle up. After burner ready, in three, two, one, boosting. Very nice, straight on. Good job, man. Good job. One thirty kilometers left. What is this point then? Uh, this point is a hundred kilometers left till the decoupling point. Oh, We're slowing no. down. Don't want to overshoot it. Yeah, sure. So uh, you are you are slowing down to be 100 kilometers away from the decoupling point. No, we're slowing down right now, starting from 100 kilometers away from the target. Mission stage one was to locate an accurate launch point on the Tropic of Cancer. We took off 90 degrees from the surface towards a decoupling point on the um, very edge of the geosynchronous physics grid. Um, once we arrived there. Uh, during stage two, uh, we waited for the exact moment uh, when the star was behind the planet um, and we were in the shadow of the Umbra zone. We then quickly moved forward to step outside and decouple from the planetary rotation and then set a straight course towards the Umbra focal point. Um, then we enter stage three, uh, we call it deep space probing. Alright, 10 kilometers left, we're hitting uh, 1900. 1990 kilometers, slowing down to 50 meters per second. We're at 1992, about five meters per second, and then I'll fully stop once we hit 1999. Because we need it to be very accurate. That's so crucial. So it's different because you are focused on a technical problem, and everybody needs to be focused. We we need this element as a starting point, and if it's inaccurate, everything will deviate so far from the objective that you can have a lot of trouble at the end of the journey. So it's more exactly. tensed. It's uh, there is a lot more tension, but this is when preparation helps. To prepare for such a long expedition. We need an accurate resource estimation and management. We came to Orison as our first stop for the majority of our supplies. After a thorough test flight and empirical consumption assessment, our captain and loadmaster took an entire Crusader day to complete the purchase of all logistic items, including apparel, armor sets, medical supplies, food, drinks, and personal containers six days in advance before the operation. Ow. Look, throw it on the floor. I think you're going to be happy with that. These supplies would be orderly placed on our carrot, Crane, to support a single trip for all 12 crews. Wow, Doctor, your, your suit is so so cool. Thank you. Where and, did you uh, get it? Personal tailors. Oh, um, secret. Secret, okay. Is there no, any store quest secret? I got it. <laughs> no, I got, I got it here on Orison. Uh, over oh, by, okay. you, know, you know where Kelto is? So if you go to the building right next door to it, there's a really colorful room that has a elevator in the center that takes you up to the bar. Didn't put my shoes on. What are my shoes? After a long day of sourcing supplies, the team enjoyed a wonderful night at the Voyager bar. Riding the next sunrise, we were prepared for the next destination. At Ors, the next shuttle is approaching the station. Oh, 
arm. I'm just gonna walk the slow. <laughs> what the <a> dick? <laughs> Why are you so close to me? I don't like it. Two hours have come by. With resource arrangement and placement, the team loaded up Curvature's current flagship, Crank. With a massive cargo, we surfed the puffy clouds, rising to a safe quantum travel altitude. And... Right. Ship going heads forward. Up. Yeah, heads up. Heads up. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure to get you, Everest, safely. Engage quantum in three, two, one. Our next stop is Hurston L1 Green Glade Station. After acquiring a few unique items sold at this location, our shopping trip will come to an end. In other words, if nothing goes wrong here, it's going to be a smooth sailing until the mission day. Shoot, my internet was down. Um, You're down? Uh, yeah, my, my internet is down. I'll try to stop uh, the ship. Yeah, see if we can engage the uh, command station or if, yeah. if my character is out of the game, just to engage the uh, pilot seat. Our ship should be uh, shifting towards a, a clear direction. So it shouldn't be running into anything. Yep, yeah, I'll try to bump you. Uh, can I try oh, don't, to? Don't just... kill me. No, I'm not killing don't, you. Don't... Just try to bump you. I'll use my fist. Ah. Uh... Oh, you're back? No, I'm not. If there is a stone in front of us, I, I probably have to kill you. Okay. There is a stone, then kill me. Okay. How far away is it? Uh, no stone right now. There's probably a way, but I don't think it works for the carrot. Oh, wait. Um, oh, you disappeared. Okay, take control. Yep. Oh, you're back on the ship. Ship, yeah, I'm back. Nice, nice. Wait a second. What? What happened? Oh, for fuck's sake, no. Ship is no, gone. No, 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 no. What happened? I think the ship storage system is uh buggy right now. Oh shit. I think it's in Victor's issue. His once I crashed out, the ship. The ship is treated as a stolen entity first, and then you call the station for landing. So the station uh, is registered that ship as um stolen ship. Wait, so oh, I cannot call it. That's a lesson. That's a big lesson. Very big lesson. That means the ship is permanently lost here. Wait, what? Just buy one copy of uh, of supply. Use some analysis character. Hmm. Yeah, that should be easier way to go. Mm. 
containers are currently the only viable storage system for common access between players in Star Citizen. For cruise convenience and working efficiency, we obtain the spawnable medium and large containers by destroying small ships, loaded up with just enough inventory items. There we go. Star Citizen is like uh, taking a yeah, hot, hot shower. Ever, ever since, <laughs> ever since I started playing Star Citizen. He's like, nah, we don't need to go slow. Is it perfect landing? He's like slammed it right a little bit off to the side, but oh, it's nice. okay. <laughs> well, mission uh, almost successful. There's always that little bit, that smaller sense of anxiety just because of how many variables come with Star Citizen, right? Yeah, we spent a day, basically an entire day, just buying and getting the supplies for the job. And then the first carib we loaded just died. <laughs> uh, and then we had to go back and rebuy a bunch of supplies. I went and rebought a bunch of supplies. And I think you went and then loaded up your carib with a bunch of things. Because uh, it's uh, the way the game is meant to be played, you know, like you make your own adventures. We distributed and placed the containers at their most appropriate locations, according to the Carrick's interior design and onboard traffic. Repairing room. Hangar. Medical bay. Crew quarter. Mess hall. We even placed boxes as trash cans to prevent littering around. Garage. Armory. Each container stores supplies that functionally matches its location for easy access at all times. It turned out to be a very welcoming necessary step for long travels. In that case, I'm gonna start. The operation was initially planned for a duration of 5 hours and 42 minutes. Before the departure, the crew did a final check during the mission briefing, suited up with designated uniforms and dived into their roles with excitement. Alright, as your resident doctor on board the uh, Carrick Anya, I'm going to have to request when we get on board that you each go to the Carrick's medical facility and set your regeneration to that location uh, one person at a time if you have to make a line don't don't knock each other over and hurt each other in the process all right uh, Tony make sure uh, you lock your pitch and yaw the ship is not in motion no movement now this is our final boarding call, and please proceed to your stations. We currently still in deep space waiting, and then one last check, and then we should be uh, okay to uh, go down on this to the surface. We have two uh, launch point candidates. One was easier to get to, uh, which was like basically right beneath. OM6. Um, the other candidate is 
on the largest ocean of person and it's like r right on an island uh, in that ocean. Following the live mission progress, we chose the secondary launch point according to the daylight duration. So what we are doing here is that I'll first stand right in front of uh, Doctor's ship um, and start the pinpoint positioning of looking for that exact coordinates. Everyone uh, stand away 50 meters from me. Uh, let's move in within 30 meters, closing in the range. I'm directly in front of you, 5 meters from you. Uh, including me, or do you want me to stay where I'm at? Let's converge on me, and then we'll we'll move up upwards. No, that's too steep. I'm still standing in the exact same spot I was. <gasps> yeah, you okay? Ninety-nine uh, percent. Uh, uh, this one, we're actually moving away from it for the purposes of observing of the uh, of the solar corona around the uh, planet. For this operation, we're in the shadow. Due to the necessity of retaining the best precision, it took us way too much time to locate the exact launch point. We missed the first planned optimal launch window. It's not really working as, as expected, so let's change uh, change our plan. Change our plan. But then we we're still about um, on one axis we were we were off about 200 meters and another we were off about 30 meters and then the other one were kind of on point. But that wasn't good enough because you think you think like the the, the further away we are uh, discrepancy in that and if we want to see a perfect ring you know, we will try our you know maximum yeah. precision at the beginning. We are getting very close to the uh, decouple window, and then I don't think we can decouple at this uh, um, at this cycle. Everybody can take a break, you know, bat log, Whoa, and come back. Like four hours, five hours, man. Well, it sucks, isn't it? <laughs> this is, yeah, this is way too much for me, man. I mean, it means uh, the expedition does not finish at like 2 a.m. for me, but at 7 a.m. it's way too late. So I'd say it's good to wait for the next, um, next window, which will be uh, quite in, uh, in a quite while. Most of us won't last till then. Which ones do you guys like? Waiting for the next sunrise to launch or waiting for a little bit longer to come back in in about like an hour, an hour and a half? My my vote goes to uh, the first option. So I, I agree with uh, Delory. My vote goes with that option too. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good. Okay. All right. See you guys later. Alright, this is our final moment. Phase 3. Go! By observing the relative motion between the ship and the star field, we can determine whether the ship is geosynchronous with the planet or not. Oh! Yep. Nice! nice. Yeah, the star is the star. Wonderful. I, I tried to steal, uh, to steal a screenshot, but it was an absolutely fantastic, nice job, man. Wait, I... I don't Reaching think I... full speed in three, two, one. Full speed reached.
Yeah. Actually, tomorrow, in 24 hours, this is Icarus' birthday. Who, whose birthday? I, uh, Icarus launch. Oh, yes. We learned tons of lessons. Actually, it was super helpful for today's mission. They built the uh, basis for today's mission. Uh, a lot of the logistics preparation was like learned from that mission. Where in Icarus, we were trying to get to the star. When we started from a point that's directly beneath the star on the ecliptic plane, and then we travel upwards until we hit the center of the standard star. Yeah, that took 30 days. Since we planned in every possible detail uh, as, as far as we could, the only thing we don't have control on is uh, the servers. I think that's really what drives a lot of the players in, in the verse is truly exploration. Um, and with, with Curvature, we've actually been able to do that in a game that's as vast and, and uh, deep as Star System is. However, even with the past experiences from Operation Icarus, we still encountered several unexpected events and mysteries during this Eclipse mission. Putting a uh, temporary quarantine notice on uh, cargo pod 3. Here is the contamination that I'm going to take care of. Everyone, uh, please stay out of it until other notes. Copy. Um, you know those, those things, once they get in, they'll start to grow. Fast. What is the cleaning crew doing? There are plants and rocks and poo. There's a poo in here. <laughs> there it is. Whoa. That hurts, Bo. What? What did I do? There's a spy, everyone. That's a good Don't choice. Said berries. Is it edible? No. Nope. Try. Don't not eat the berries. Oh, they're toxic. No, no, don't, you can try. <laughs> oh. We have a. Uh... <laughs> We have a doctor. Huh? What? Your doctor said no. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a doctor. Wait, Bo. Oh. Do you know where these uh, plushies come from? There's a point at the at our rear. Rear side. Really? Okay. I'm getting to. Uh, there's a ship following us. I'm not sure why there's a ship. Check this. Yeah, I see the blueprints. Is that a ship? That is a ship. That's a ship. Whose ship? I don't know. No idea. It disappeared? We're safe. Oh, it disappeared. That was, that was probably an NPC spawning. Oh, the Captain Bridge elevator is broken. You yeah. sure? Yeah. I'll maybe uh, get it down. I think it's just glitched, probably. <laughs> I haven't seen this stuff before. I'm missing what? What's this? Is it, is it a pyramid? Wait, great. Are you okay? 搭了那个配料小瓶配料瓶那个小塔非常的有艺术感你下一次如果还有这种机会你会给我们准备给我们呈现一个更加精彩更加让人叹为观止的艺术品吗那当然可以<笑><笑> and you will get bored because everything will go right and that is great that, uh, it, it gives time to think about having fun it gives you time to think about what what you will do what what other exploration mission you can start and that's what i say in my in my professional work if everything goes right you you will just wait for the results to to power in Sound is coming, sound is coming. What? See the sound, 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 sound. The standard is coming. In a sense, every meter we advance would be the closest step to witness a planetary annular eclipse for the very first time in star citizen history. Bottom side, bottom, bottom. Zoom all the way in. Are you excited about seeing the final eclipse? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why uh, after I got mad after the delay, I say, oh no, come down and let's see it and relax. It's gonna be amazing. Sun will appear, so we're kind of off center, trying to oh. start adjusting our course. I am super excited. I haven't seen how eclipses look like in Star Citizen. Oh, there's a, our first glare. Absolutely, I, I love seeing anything, anything uh, you know, scientific and and uh, something you don't really get to see very often, uh, especially in a game or environment where people are, are focused on the surface level things. This is something that you have to actually reach out and go get. Adjusting course. I am. There is that level of excitement, um, almost like childlike kind of excitement, whenever you accomplish that kind of thing. Glare is going away a little bit, huh? which is good. We're correcting our course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm excited about seeing this in game, and uh, I, I think there is so much potential to exploration and tourism alike, and uh, th those gameplay loops can benefit from that. Almost here, 858 kilometers right. left. Oh, absolutely. That was that was actually a very uh, a very interesting moment for us when we got to see that. The ring starts to come. The fatigue and numbness from sitting motionlessly swept over after an 11 hour long arduous journey. But every crew still laser focused on the small planet at the rear of our ship, because we all know that the Hurston Ring may come into our sight at any moment now. Here we are. The ring is absurd. Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. There she, there she comes. Yeah, yeah. The ring is complete. Avengers, assemble. Yeah. Power! Ultron, assemble! <laughs> and uh, one more? Curva. No, not Curva. We only have five people? We have five so far. Wait, I think we had, had six, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Who timed out? Oh, okay. Then that's me. Yeah, Bo is out. I know, I know he's there. Oh. That was not in the frame. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, I'm coming into bed. Good. Yeah, of course. Have a good night. Yeah, my yeah. Good night. You, you could say, uh, let's, uh, let me have a, a good morning and a good day. <laughs> have, a, have a good morning and a good sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Viewing beautiful scenery was one of our goals, then the other one was to bring such an exploration experience to the wider community.
哇，哇牛逼哇，哇这到哪了？我操，大黑斯特，帅帅、啊！月前光效一出来太带劲了，我。对，月月前光效很好看。哇，还有从侧面使用，对，好帅啊！怎么看怎么看，好吧。Very, very interesting that this sort of stuff exists and can be done, and is just so awesome for exploration. Have you seen an eclipse in Star Citizen? Thank <laughs> you. 